Hey everyone, welcome to the lesson here at THSS Technology. Uh, today we're going to continue on with our game that we've been building. Uh, last week we did our enemy spawning system. Today let's do a very rudimentary simple combat system for our game. Excellent. Let's get started. So uh, we're going to create a, uh, a series of weapons for our games in the future. And we're going to have all those weapons just kind of be live on the player at all times. And we're just going to set them active or inactive, kind of depending on the weapons that you have picked up and equipped and so forth. So I'm going to start by creating an empty in my player, and I'm just going to call this weapons. And as I said, this is going to store all the weapons in the game. And the first weapon we're going to do today is like a sword that spins around our enemy. Um, so let's uh, create another empty. We're going to call this sword inside of that. Uh, we're going to create another empty called sword holder. This is what's going to rotate uh, around. And then inside our sword holder, we're actually going to put our weapon itself. So let's go into our uh, weapons folder down here. And let's see, what's a good sword we could do for that? Uh, maybe uh, maybe this one right here, that looks pretty good. And then we're going to drop that inside of our game right there. Okay, let's change the order layer to five so we see it first. And let's rename this here to sword. And let's kind of put it where we want it in our game. I'm thinking that's looking pretty good right there. Um, and uh, yeah, you can kind of position however you want, but it is going to orbit around our player. So on our sword, uh, we need to add a collider. So I'm going to add a box collider 2D. Let's just edit our collider here so it's a little bit smaller. And uh, we'll be a little bit generous with this hitbox there. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. Let's just make this a nicer number here. and Let's make that 1.5. Perfect. Okay, that is looking good. So we have our sword uh, that is going to be spinning around our character. So uh, let's go and make a script that's going to control that. I've gone ahead and created a, uh, a weapon uh, weapons folder inside of our scripts folders to keep things better organized. And inside of there, let's create a C sharp script for this. Okay. And uh, let's call this, let's see, what do we want to, what are we going to call this? Let's just call this uh, our spinning weapon. Okay, I don't want to call it sword, you know, I might have lots of spinning weapons around me in the future, but we'll just call this a spinning weapon for the name of our script. And I'm going to take the spinning weapon here, and uh, I'm going to put it on our sold sword holder game object. Because this is the object that is actually uh, going to be spinning, this empty game object here. And then we can make it so maybe you could dual wield and you could have two swords spinning around you. Uh, so anything inside of this empty here will orbit around the player. Excellent. Okay, so let's uh, open up this uh, spinning weapon script here. I'm just going to make sure my uh, external tools is set correctly. Sometimes my computer keeps changing the default on that. There we go. It's going to open up Visual Studio. Excellent. So let's open up our script now for a spinning weapon. Uh, this is going to be a relatively straightforward script here. And uh, a lot of the complexities of the script, I'm actually going to explain more in class. We're going to keep it simple here for the video. And then in class this week, we will uh, we'll talk about uh, what everything in here is doing. So let's make a public float first. And we're going to call this uh, our rotate speed. All right, this will control how quick our object is rotating. And then inside the update, uh, we're going to do transform.rotation. Okay, so this is going to rotate, remember, the empty that is holding the sprite for our sword. Okay, and whenever we're doing any type of rotation inside of Unity, uh, we use something called a quaternion. Um, you know, it's not really a vector three. Uh, when you're working in Unity, you have uh, four dimensions. You have the X, Y, and Z, but you also have the W, which is the object's relation to the camera. Okay, so don't really worry about it. Essentially, we're going to do something called quaternion.euler. And what, uh, what the Euler is going to do is that's going to take that fourth dimension, that W axis, and convert it down to a three-dimension object, okay? Three-dimension uh, movement, that is. So we're going to do Quaternion Euler. And uh, I don't want it to rotate. Uh, well, let's just have a look. Let's see what we want our object to rotate on. So we'll go back to Unity here. And uh, we'll click on our sword holder. And as you can see, I don't want it to rotate on the X axis. That's useless. So let's put that back to zero. We don't want it to rotate it on the Y, although you might want that for an effect. Let's put that back to zero. So it is the Z axis we want our object to rotate on. Okay, so let's go back into our code now. So we're gonna say on the X axis, we're gonna rotate zero. On the Y axis, we're gonna rotate zero. And now let's create the rotational value for our Z. And um, once again, just to make things overly complicated, we're gonna do transform.rotation. 
Um, but remember, we are working uh, with these quaternions, so we have to convert a Euler angle uh, on the z axis. Okay, so that's going to say we're going to rotate it on the z axis here. Okay, and to that we're going to plus. So we're going to add our rotate speed times time dot delta time. Okay. So that's going to rotate our object uh, around our player because that game object is uh, a child of the player here. Okay, so now on our sword holder, sword holder here, sword holder, tough word to say, uh, we got to rotate speed. And uh, essentially, uh, this is how many degrees you want it to rotate around your player in a second. That's what the time dot delta time does. Okay, so for example, if I hit 360, it's going to do 360 degrees around our player in one second. So if I hit play now, our sword should rotate at complete rotation once a second. Excellent. So as we move around, the sword is going to rotate and spin with us. Now it's not going to actually do anything. It's actually going to hit our enemy. Um, and we're going to change that around in a little bit. But as you can see, it is actually spinning at an okay rate. And if you want to slow it down, you can do like 270, so two thirds of a rotation every second and but you can adjust that speed and maybe you can get power-ups that adjust that speed later in the game but you can see it's kind of bumping into our player and that has to do with its box collider so we're gonna get that fixed here so on our sword we're actually gonna select this to is trigger okay and this is gonna enable us to do damage anyways but now it spins properly and it is not causing the same issues perfect okay looking good all right so now let's uh, create a system where our sword is actually going to damage the enemy and that's really what we want so we're going to create a new script here in the weapons and we're going to call this uh, script uh, or maybe enemy damager because it's going to be what's damaging the enemy let us uh, update that script there and we're going to take our enemy damager script and put it onto the sword itself okay so let's open up our enemy damager here okay so on the damager, we're going to, we got a couple different options. We could just have it outright kill your enemy. Um, uh, so, you know, that is a, a relatively straightforward thing we could do uh, pretty simply. If you just wanted to, every time it hits the enemy, it just kills them. Um, but I want to create like a health system for our enemy. So maybe the enemies get tougher or maybe different weapons do different damage. So we're going to create a very, very rudimentary health system for our enemy. So I'm going to go back over to my enemy controller actually. Okay, and then on my enemy controller, I'm going to create a new float, and we're going to call this uh, enemy health. Excellent. So we're going to create a float there called enemy health. Sorry, there's a phone ringing over there. Uh, so uh, they're on enemy health, and then the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a custom method over here. So we're going to create a method, and we're going to create this a, uh, a public void, because we're going to want to be able to access this method from other scripts. We are going to make it public, and we're going to call it take damage. Okay, and with this take damage method, uh, we're going to want it to take float damage, and we'll call it uh, just uh, damage to take. Okay. And then when, whenever this happens, we're gonna create a system here. So we're gonna say, uh, maybe we're gonna take our enemy health, um, uh, and if every time our enemy health, every time this is, uh, is taken, it's gonna do damage to take, okay? So we're gonna minus equal damage to take. And this is the amount of damage that other scripts are going to be calling, okay? And then we're gonna say, if our enemy health is less than zero, Okay, well, less than or equal to zero, uh, we will destroy our game object. Okay, so we've created a new public method here called take damage, and inside take damage, we're looking for a float, a number, and that number is going to be referred to as damage to take, and our enemy health is going to be minus our damage to take, and if our enemy health, which remembers that variable right up here, ever gets below zero, we're going to destroy our game object, which is going to destroy our enemy. Okay, and uh, every enemy we can assign them a, uh, a different health value inside their prefab, so we can use this enemy controller script for any of our enemies, which is fantastic. So we can just change the value inside of our prefab folder. Okay, so now that we have a float variable that we can use here, damage to take, um, we can now put this and use this uh, inside of our uh, inside of our uh, enemy damager script. Okay, so. Let's go back into here. And just remember, we are looking to call the take damage 
void right here. Okay, so that is what we are looking to call. Okay, so let's go back to our enemy damager now. Okay, so inside the enemy damager, let's uh, create a public float and uh, let's call this damage amount. And what we can do is we can then use this script and every weapon can do a different amount of damage. Okay, uh, then we're gonna go uh, into, we're gonna create a new method here. We're gonna call this, it's gonna be a private void and it's gonna be on trigger enter. We've done on trigger enters before in class and uh, we've already set the box collider on this enemy to a trigger. So let's deal with it there. So, and we don't want our sword kind of damaging everything. So we're gonna just do a very simple uh, if statement here. Um, if collision dot tag equals enemy. So you want to make sure your enemy is tagged as enemy and we can go over that in class as well. Um, then we are going to say, we're going to look for a collision, get component. We did this last week in class, the get component command, and we're going to look for the component, the enemy controller. So now it's grabbing um, whatever object has the enemy controller script on it. Then from the enemy controller script, let's initialize it. And we are going to now grab the take damage uh, method there, the take damage method. And in that take damage method, we are gonna put our damage amount. Awesome. So it's kind of complicated. Um, we'll sit down and we'll break this down a little bit more in class, what is working here. But essentially it's just whenever uh, our weapon, because uh, this enemy damage script's attached to our sprite there, which has the trigger collider, uh, collides with a object that has tagged as enemy, it's gonna grab the enemy controller script it's going to grab the take damage void from that, and it's going to assign the damage amount, which is going to be right up here. And on our enemy controller script, um, it's going to then initiate this. The take damage is going to minus the damage to take, and the damage to take is uh, this damage amount right here. And then if that uh, ever gets below zero, it is gonna destroy the game object and destroy our enemy. Okay, a lot of moving parts there. Let's see how all this all interacts in the game. Okay, so let's update all these scripts. So on our sword here, let's say the sword maybe does uh, four damage. Okay, so our four sword's gonna do four damage. Uh, but our enemy, so let's go to our prefab now, our enemy, and where is our enemy script? There's our enemy script. The enemy health is gonna be set to five. So the enemy is actually not gonna die with one hit of the sword. It's gonna take multiple hits. And let's see if everything works. So we'll start up our game. There's our sword spinning. Here comes our enemy. All right, didn't kill him the first swipe, but he kills him on the second swipe. Perfect, so our enemy is now taking damage based on its health, and it does take two swings of the swords to actually kill the enemy. Perfect. So that was a huge lesson today, and um, hopefully that uh, made enough sense, but we're going to break it down a lot more in class this upcoming week. All right, we will see you all later.